Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching, accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the Million Dollar Challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video we're going to be looking at more broker issues with a focus on European brokers. We're also going to be looking at the letter that uh, Nextbridge Hydrocarbons sent to FINRA and the implications of that letter. So before we get started let's have a quick look at what's happening in the market. So uh, headline here from Yahoo Finance. We are expecting Amazon and Apple earnings. There is also the July jobs report and hopefully if that's positive it does give a boost to the market. So again huge huge week for earnings here and uh, we can see uh, these include SoFi, AM AMD, Amazon, Apple, uh, etc. And uh, if we have a look at prediction for SoFi, which is one that we will be watching, uh, again, earnings reporting tomorrow before the market opens and Wall Street is expecting earnings uh, per share of uh, 7 cents. Uh, negative uh, up 41.7% year on year revenue 473.4 million up 32.9% a year on year so that could certainly be a significant ca catalyst there and uh, for Apple again the biggest stock um, in, in the market uh, we're looking at potential revenue in my opinion possibly in excess of 85 billion dollars so before we look at some of the broker issues, uh, I'd like to have a quick reminder of the previous video. We looked at the pros and cons of moving your shares with AST. So go ahead and check the previous video out. Uh, and uh, one other thing I'd like to say about moving your shares with AST, you do not need to do this now. You can certainly have a think about the S1 is still not effective, but have a look at some of the pros and cons which were explained in the previous video. So uh, I'd also like to give a shout out here to Kat Stryker. So go ahead and give her a follow. She is not a holder of MMTLP. She is a uh, significant uh, influencer who is behind AMC and GME and uh, what she has also done is uh, reposted and looked at um, the, new, the breaking news with regard to the letter uh, from 15 congressional uh, members sent to Gary Gensler and one thing I would like to point out for everybody is that AMC and G, uh, GME did not manage to do this so this is significant from our side and that's credit to the MMTLP community. Uh, they did not get Congress on board. We certainly are making uh, positive moves. So what she said here, this is proof that our voices matter when we come together and listen. We can make a difference in large numbers and hope the SEC is now forced to take action for retail. We will see, but our congressional letter to the SEC is huge. Now it's time for action. So yes, I do agree with uh, Kat. I, uh, this letter is huge. And once we get this reply from Gary Gensler, things should change. Let's now have a look at some of the broker issues uh, with a focus on European brokers. So shout out here to Smokey who's posted this is a comment left, left on his video. Uh, and if you're in a foreign broker like myself and everybody else outside of the USA, try calling them or opening a chat and telling them that you want paper certificates. Uh, there could be an additional cost and you, you can then transfer your certificate to AST yourself. So good advice there from Smokey. And uh, there's a, a shout out here to Manoflow1229 who posted in the comments, people who are in Europe who own MMTLP request paper certificates, you then don't need... Uh, you can then send those paper to, uh, certificates to AST. Don't let your broker lie to you. So good advice there. And I think that is one thing that we can put pressure on the European brokers. Uh, shout out here to S1 Grey who stated we can't find any European brokers that will allow us to transfer our next speech hydrogen carbon shares to AST. As of yet, please let us know if you have a diff different response. What I can say on behalf of Grey is uh, prior to the U3 halt, he was able to transfer without any issues some of his shares to AST. Uh, but right now, I think there are significant issues and the European brokers are certainly creating problems. And um, 
And uh, no, next update from Gavin, who stated trading 212 are waiting to see what IBKR are going to do, uh, because obviously trading 212 will use IBKR as uh, their subsidiary to uh, for their trades uh, for MMTLP. So the decision of IBKR is also going to affect uh, the decision of trading 212. So we uh, will continue to put pressure and uh, stay tuned for updates. What I'd now like to do is uh, share with you the correspondence from Nextridge Hydrocarbons to FINRA. So what FINRA posted early a few days ago, July 27th, uh, 2023, on their website is the uh, FINRA correspondence with Nextridge Hydrocarbons, April to June 2023. So this is very interesting. So I'm wondering whether FINRA shared this correspondence because of the congressional letter and uh, maybe trying to uh, get ahead of the game. However, I think uh, this is uh, something that could work in our favour rather than FINRA's favour. So let's have a look at, first of all, the letter uh, April, dated April the 18th, 2023 uh, to FINRA. And this is from Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. This letter was actually uh, from uh, Clifton DuBose. So what he stated here is the company have received numerous complaints and expressions of concerns from a large number of company stockholders uh, regarding the following issues that we wanted to bring to FINRA's attention and ask for FINRA's cooperation. So uh, this obviously destroys a myth that the company were doing nothing. They were certainly behind the scenes trying their utmost to get the trading back open temporarily and what they've stated here significant number of uncovered short positions exist in the company company shares of common stock due to the large number of short positions that was disclosed by FINRA as of November the 30th 2022 and some shortholders as of that day and other investors who sold the MMTLP stock short thereafter might not have had an opportunity to close their positions due to the fund FINRA's U3 hole. I'll go as far as saying they did not close, not might not have closed. So number two, stockholders have complained that they believe they would be able to trade uh, on the December the 9th and December the 12th. Certainly that's the, what everybody was led to believe. That's what the brokers told us. And that was what obviously uh, was shared with the corporate action as well, leading up to December the 12th record date after the spin-off. FINRA issued the U3 halt Prior to these trading days, stockholders did not have the opportunity to trade their MMTLP stock on these two days. So I'm going to be honest, many, many people who bought MMTLP did not actually buy for Nextbridge. They bought just to sell on the last two days. So um, no issue with that whatsoever. Uh, and certainly you have been denied your two trading days and that should be something that you are entitled to. So uh, the company have also stated number three, as noted in FINRA's FA, Cues, there was a coding issue uh, so as far as I'm concerned FINRA have accepted an error here and have accepted fault because that was in their FAQ so they are basically saying look we made a mistake but that's not good enough in uh, you know uh, you're basically saying we made a mistake but we've got immunity uh, which is not great uh, with respect to the MMTLP stock FINRA incorrectly classified MMTLP stock as a security of a non sec uh, reporting company and as a result incorrectly published its threshold securities list from October 22nd, 2021 through to January the 4th, 2022 and from October the 7th, 2022, many stockholders have expressed frustration over their understanding, of their understanding that they made trading decisions upon inaccurate information. So this inaccurate information was as a direct result of errors from FINRA who they are bl blaming on coding issues, but that's not good enough. It's not transparent, it's not fair, and it's harmed every single retail investor of MMTLP. So the stockholder complaints have grown in scope and um, intensity. Yes, certainly uh, true. And uh, in, further down in the letter, they've stated in terms of the request, we are open to a temporary trading window. It is paramount that only 165.47 uh, million shares of common stock were distributed. We do not want to dilate, dilute our stockholders' opportunity during the trading period. So that's positive for the company. The company will not sell any new shares in this trading uh, or temporary trading period. Mr. McCabe has agreed to a six-month six lockup period of his shares. Uh, so certainly looks like they are very, very trying to be a, as accommodating as possible for FINRA to uh, comply and help. And the final part, if FINRA has a different preferred path to um, addressing these issues, 
raised in this letter, the company welcomed the discussion uh, of these issues and we look forward to working with FINRA to resolve these uh, issues. Signed by Clifton DeBose, so a very positive letter. And finally, on a light-hearted note, I'd like to give a shout out here to Libit Shames, who responded to my post earlier uh, today with regard to the pros and cons of moving your shares with AST. So remember, I did say you don't have to make a decision right now. You don't need to move anything right now. And what she has said is, yes, I am not moving shit. So what I have responded there is hopefully you do at least once a day. And she responded there is uh, on my bro friend's chest. I am and a good one, Ali. Lol. So um, uh, good luck to the boyfriend from there and finally a quick review of the weekly watch list uh, from the previous week uh, we've called out stocks such as Intel that was up 8.8% on the week TLRY was a good uh, call that was up 33.5% on the week good earnings there XXII that was up 21.5% on the week HPK HP KEW another call in our watch list that was up 24.5% on the week KTTA that was level on the week and uh, DWAC that closed level on the week after Monday's dip SVRA that was up 8% Thursday to Friday and uh, overall down 1.7% on the week not all calls are successful so if you would like to get the next weekly watch list you can certainly join us for less than $9 a month details are in the description below thank you very much for watching please stay tuned